the circumcision. We worship God in spirit. Not in the flesh. To be bringing sounds from heaven. And yet we are bringing those sounds in the gyration of demonic spirits. I thought you were praying. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. There is a way God educates us spiritually that makes prayer potent. Can you ask that God will make you so skilled that you are able to receive from the realm of God the things that are critical for you to be able to prosecute prayer accurately? Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord to make you so skilled, so skilled so skilled that the kind of information that is required whatever insight that is required for you to be able to prosecute prayer for you to be able to gain mileage in the spirit that will provide you an advantage in your pilgrimage upon the face of the earth Ask that the Lord will educate you accordingly. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? Kabo ravashata kabete pariatai. The kind of seamless transitions that Jesus had, that every time he was faced with a situation, he was able to access wisdom, he was able to access insight. He was able to access power. Can you ask the Lord that he will help you? In the coming days. In the coming days. That you be adequately educated. That the resources at your disposal you will be able to access. That the resources that are available in God you will be able to access. <laughs> Wisdom is available. The presence of God is available. The power of God is available. But there is a way that you, you gain alignment in the spirit that such education grants you the skill and the capacity for you to access those resources. Dear sister, you are not supposed to be confused. Young man, you are not supposed to be confused. There are enough resources in God. The problem is, do you know how to access it? There are resources that make it easy for a man to live above the corruption of his generation. Those resources are available. Don't be like Hagar. There was a well of water there. There was a spring there. But her eyes had not been opened to see it. And her baby would have died for test. But the Lord says that the, the Bible says that the Lord opened her eyes. My God. Lord, 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 Lord. Ida Vanante Kabila Susa Batabaya. There are resources enough to make your spiritual life 
a beautiful, consistent experience. You don't need to be dry today and on fire tomorrow. You don't need to be hot today and cold tomorrow. There is a river, a river, a river, a river. The question is, do you know how to plug yourself into that river? Shabada barataya. Ikabote leprasanda kabela dios. Eta papa papa para corre kabela natai. Come on, are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying for yourself? Ate de tavila na cobre sadila taya. Ekata la tata parada da barate. O shaparia tote bati batiba. And the ba 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 the Bible calls God the multi-breasted one. He has enough resources. The question is that are you educated enough? Do you know how to tap into those resources? That's the kind of man Elijah was. When he appeared at the altar, he knew what to do. Ete parakato televate landia eta ba 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 ba. Elijah was not guessing. He was not taking a chance. He knew exactly what to do. There is a place in the spirit where God educates His men. Can you ask the Lord that in this season He will help you? He will help you. He will help you. You don't. You cannot afford to be weak. When there is enough strength in God. You cannot afford to be confused. When there is enough wisdom in God. You cannot aff afford to be struggling in your spiritual life. When there is a river. A river. A shabura manaya. Kabarada bola badiato. Ishkabrosa da barata da badaya. Ishkebresanda da barata da boya. Epraso zemande le krabila do badabaya. Lada da bada 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 Pray for five more minutes. Just five more minutes. Shada barate kabuta li barata. Ete bate bote bate 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 ba. Ishkabura da bada 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 Ishkebraso sabata. Ali kabuta li dai, ende kabi tabi tabi tabo tabata ta tabari atoka, ete brasa kada tabara tata botele aya, ishabro sande tabris kabonte le kabila tata, ishabro sana mandote bari atoka baya, ishabo televanta tapati patu tabara tata, ete bade brako de le kabira daba daba daba. The Bible describes certain people. He said they have eyes but they see not. They have ears but they hear not. They have hearts but they cannot understand. What a disadvantaged position to be in life. How can you be connected to such rich wells in the spirit and yet you are struggling? Can you ask the Lord for help tonight? Can you ask the Lord for help tonight? The same God that taught David. The Bible says he touched his fingers to fight. His fingers to fight and his hands to war. That same God. That same God. That same God. There is a place where he teaches his men. There is something that Daniel knew. The Bible says he looked at the king. He said, just give me some time. Give me some time. Let me enter my closet and pray. I know how to unlock that realm. I have been educated enough. I know how to talk to God. And the visions will be given to me. That kind kind of man can never be stranded. It's a boko bariata. He might be a slave in Babylon. He might not have money in his bank account, but he's a powerful man. He has access to the God of the whole earth. Shapapapaya. Shapapapaya. 
barato legresa de balado baladelaya escabora taba ba 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 ba. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of man I want to be. Shabarato te kabi eto ba 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 ba. In the day and time when the average believer is running after money, I want skill in the spirit. Shabba ba 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 e kata 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 e te brosa bata libra sute. No wonder when the angel appeared to Daniel, he said, "I have come to give you skill and understanding." Papa, papa, pa. leke deke deke de. Rada ba 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 ba. E ta 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 paruta pa. Shaka pa la kabote le kate. Can you beg the Lord tonight and say, "Lord, give me skill. Lord, give me understanding that I will know how to access the resources that are available in Christ." Shaba, shaba, ikabote le bata ba. Resources for my spiritual life. Resources for my marriage. Resources for my business, resources for my ministry, resources for my academics. God has all in Him. It's a pa 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 pa. For the Bible says that through these precious promises, the Lord has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Separate. Every resource you need to live a godly life in this realm, the Bible says that the Lord has made it available. So if you are not living a godly life, it's not because the resources are not available. It is because you don't know. You don't know how to access them. Can you ask God, show me mercy tonight. You that sent the angel Gabriel to give Daniel skill and understanding. Lord, I am here. Lord I am here Lord I am here Lord I am here Lord I am here Lord I am desperate also I can't navigate my life I can't arrive my destination except I be educated Lord 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 it's a pa 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 Parati poliata is cabala bodele mandia. I da pa 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 pa. I da pa 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 pa. I da pa 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 pa. La da da ya, la da da ya. Lege borate, i kabonte le bonte ya. Jaba ba 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 boy, jaba ba 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 boy, jaba ba 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 boy. Lege dore krivananto, i palote pele kabote. Ika ta 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 ta, ete kruse pa deliote, anda bola kabote le babo, isha pa 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 yo, la gada gada gado, le brokote le kabila toya, isha pa isha pa isha pa isha pa, iskele bo na makabota ya. Yes, pray, 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 pray. Pray, that's right, pray. Oh. 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 Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel. Oh. Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel. Saturate my heart. 
let it overflow. Emmanuel, saturate my heart, cause an overflow. Oh, Emmanuel, saturate my heart, let it overflow. Emmanuel, saturate my heart, cause an overflow. Emmanuel, saturate my heart, let it overflow. Emmanuel, saturate my heart, cause an overflow. Emmanuel, oh. Emmanuel. Let there be an overflow, an overflow, an overflow. May your heart be overwhelmed. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Pray for one more minute. There cannot be more than enough in God and I am struggling. Struggling to find myself. Struggling to find my feet. Struggling to climb the mountain of God. There is enough in God. There is enough in God. There is enough in God. Oh, Sabele manakobai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Holy Spirit, we thank you tonight. Thank you for the things you are doing in our midst. Thank you for the help you are sending our way. Tonight again, Holy Spirit, we ask by the instrument of your word, you will draw us closer to where it is that you want to bring us. And when we are done tonight, Holy Spirit, please take all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please be seated. Hallelujah. If you have been around since we finished the fast 
you will know that uh, we began a warfare series. The essence of the warfare series is to equip us to be able to maintain our deliverance and sustain our victory against the devil or over the devil. Uh, as our fast was coming to an end, remember that I told you that deliverance is not a one-off event. That is the mistake so many people make. They feel that once they have prayed certain deliverance prayers, or let's begin at the very top, they feel that once they are born again, remember I said to you that salvation in itself is deliverance. Salvation in itself is deliverance. Because by salvation you are rescued to be delivered. Like I told you, the definition of deliverance is to be rescued, is to be redeemed, uh, is to be set free. So by salvation itself, you are rescued, you are redeemed, you are set free from the hold, the control, the government, the power, and even the jurisdiction of the devil. The Bible says... You are brought out of darkness and you are brought into the kingdom of his dear son. Where? In the light. So from salvation itself, many people think that now that I'm born again, it automatically translates to the fact that I'm not uh, going to have to fight any more battles. So even though you have experienced salvation and even though after salvation, you have prayed certain deliverance prayers and you have been delivered from the effect or the control of certain demonic spirits. There is a need for you to maintain your deliverance and sustain your victory by certain postures that you sustain. And the first posture that we mirrored from the scriptures is that you must resist the devil. That's the first posture. You must resist the devil. I said to you in that first teaching that the devil is not going to take no for an answer. Even if you, he notices that you have been saved, you have prayed deliverance prayers, he's going to keep coming back to check, to find out if indeed the thing you said you have experienced, you are willing to defend it at all costs. I said to us that it is your responsibility to maintain the territorial integrity of your land. That is your body, your life, your space. Satan will seek whatever occasion he can find to invade your space. So the Bible says it is when you resist the devil that he will what? For the Bible says that your enemy, the devil, is going around like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour. If it were not possible for him to devour people, and remember that Peter was not writing that epistle to unbelievers. He was rewrote that epistle to Christians. If it were not possible for Satan to devour a Christian, Peter would not have put it in his letter, in his epistle. He said, your enemy, the devil, is moving around like a roaring lion looking for him whom to devour. Your posture to be able to overcome that is that you will be sober and what? Vigilant. So you need to be able to resist the devil. That's the first posture. It means therefore that the Christian must consistently remind themselves that they are at war. And the one that you are at war with, he is determined, he is deliberate, he is intentional, and he is very patient. Satan can camp around the life of a man for as long as is necessary if it will help him to achieve his purpose. I was saying to us on Sunday about that great evangelist. The council of witchcraft in that village were willing to wait years. They had only one plan in mind. Bring the man down. If it took 15 years, they were willing to wait. If it will help them achieve that agenda. So I showed you in that first teaching that even Jesus, he showed us that Satan came to check. John chapter 14, the Bible says, this, the prince of this world cometh and he has what? 
nothing in me. It means that Satan came to check. He came. But when Satan arrived, Satan found that Jesus had built a wall of defense around himself that Satan's goods could not be found in Jesus' hands. So after that posture, we began to speak last week about the posture of being strong in the Lord. So your ability to resist is consequent upon your ability to maintain that divine union with Christ. So the strength is not yours, basically. The strength is derived from your relationship with Jesus. So if you are going to be able to function as a Christian on this side of the divide, the realities that exist in Christ, the realities that Christ has made possible, you will be able to take advantage of those realities to prosecute your Christian journey. So your strength comes from the fact that your position in Christ is a consciousness in which you live. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. You've heard us say it many times, the Christian is not a superman, he's a helped man. He's helped. How does he draw help? He draws help from the position that he occupies based on his union with Christ. The Bible says that if anyone is joined to Christ or to God, he is what? One spirit. So your spirit is mingled with the spirit of God and on the basis of that, you have the strength to be able to push back the hands of the devil. Tonight we want to add one more block. In your fighting, you must not fight as one that beats the air. It means, therefore, that every one of us must be able to identify our unique purposes in God and on the basis of what it is that God has committed into our hands, we are able to draw strength to defend what it is that God wants to do with our life. There's not much you will become in the hand of God if you do not first of all know what it is that God wants to do with your life. Your unique purpose in God. This is why Paul said that I do not run aimlessly. 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. That's our pivot scripture. I do not run aimlessly. There is a unique destination. There is a unique purpose for which uh, I have been apprehended by God. And on the basis of that, I order my life with that goal in mind. And you see, while in the body of Christ, we are very, very deliberate about talking about our purpose in the earth as relates to maybe uh, secular life, whether your purpose is to be a teacher, whether your purpose is to be in medicine, whether your purpose is to be an engineer, whether your purpose is to be in ministry. Most of the time, we don't look at purpose from the angle of the kind of Christian that God wants to make you. What is God building with your spiritual life exactly? If you do not know what it is that God is building with your spiritual life, you will not be willing to make the sacrifices to look like what God has in mind. In fact, the thing I want to talk about tonight is spiritual disciplines. But you see, spiritual disciplines will only be useful to you if you understand what it is that God wants to achieve by those disciplines. The reason many of you struggle with spiritual disciplines is that you don't have an idea. You are totally lost as to what it is that God wants to accomplish. This is why you joke with the things that God has given to you as instructions. For Paul, for instance, the reason Paul was such a successful Christian is because the Lord showed him what it is that he wanted to do with his life. He said he was going to make him a vessel that will bear the message of the Lord to the Gentiles, that he will even have to stand before kings. So Paul understood 
that everything he was going to go through in his life was designed by God to make him a certain kind of man spiritually. The reason many Christians are vulnerable to the devil is because they do not know what kind of spiritual man am I going to look like? How will I know that I have attained the burden in the heart of God for my spiritual life? How do I measure my spiritual progress? We are all called to be Christians, but we are not the same. The demands of God on our lives will never be the same. There are demands that are unique to every Christian, but there are demands that are unique to the kind of spiritual man or woman God wants to make you. If you do not know what God wants to make you, then you will not appreciate the kind of pressures he is putting on your life. He's putting on your life. I was watching a short clip by Catherine Coleman, and Catherine Coleman was saying that the, many people, uh, she was talking to young people, I'm trying to remember the exact words that she used, but the summary of what she was saying is that the kind of anointing on her life, God can give it to anybody. But she said what? There is a price to pay. There is a price. A huge price. Paul recognized that for him to succeed in the spiritual mold and shape that he had been called into, he must not run aimlessly and he must not fight as one that beats the air. So he recognized that he was in a race and in that race there was a defined destination and he recognized that there was a fight. And in that fight there was a defined precision that was required. So there's a matter of destination, and then there's a matter of precision. These things can only be entered into when you are educated enough to know exactly what kind of man is God trying to make you. What kind of man? So Paul said that the secret, he discovered that if his precision was going to be correct, and if he will arrive at his destination, he needed to deal with the matters of subjecting what? His body. So let's read it. Let's read it together. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 26. Therefore, okay, let's begin at, uh, let's do 25. Let me see. And everyone who competes for the prize, give me an LT. So it's easy. All athletes are what? disciplined where in their training they do it to win a prize that will fade away but we do it for what so paul is using the metaphor of sports of athletics to describe the christian life and he's saying that there is you will notice a few things here there is discipline there is what training and there is what a prize three things there is discipline, there is training, and there is a price. And he is saying that the motivation for the discipline in training is what? The price. You are motivated by what it is that you have potential to become. What are you going to become? The champion. So that becomes your motivation for discipline where? In training. You know the kind of man you are going to look like. You are going to be celebrated. You are going to be crowned. You are going to be uh, probably have certain benefits because you won the prize. So on the basis of that, the athlete gives attention to discipline where? In training. It's not just that the athlete is attending training. The athlete is what? Disciplined in that training. Disciplined in that training. This is why in our clan we talk about things like consistency. It's not enough that you, you, you have de decided that you will participate in the training. The question is what discipline have you put around the training? I need to say to you that every day of your life, every day, if you are going to win the battles against Satan, all the plans that Satan has against your life, Every day of your life must be approached as a woman that is in labor. 
every day of your life. A woman in labor is trying to bet life. She's trying to give birth to life. You as a Christian, if you approach your life daily as a woman in labor, you will know that every day you are trying to bet the man that you want to be. Every day. Every day that you are alive, you are a woman in labor. And what you are trying to deliver on a daily basis is the kind of man that you should look like. So, you are looking at betting a man that people can have a certain uh, perception about. So, you, you are working on your reputation on a daily basis. On a daily basis. You're, on a daily basis. What will be people's perception about me, my Christianity, the way I live, the way I honor God, what will it be on a daily basis? You have to be able to bet that kind of man on a daily basis. On a daily basis, you must be living with your legacy in mind. What impact am I going to leave on a generation when I die? When I die? How will I be remembered? You must live with that burden every day that you wake up. I find that in my life, in recent times, since about last year or so, I'm always thinking of when I'm going to be old. Always. These days, I just see any old person and I imagine my own life when I'm 90, when I'm going to be 95. And I keep telling myself that a time is going to come when you are not going to have all the strength that you think that you have. If you don't build a legacy now, you'll be remembered for nothing. So every day of your life is a labor to give birth to a legacy. Every day of your life. Every day of your life is not just a labor for your reputation or for your legacy. It's also a labor for your influence. What effect will your life have on the men that meet you on a daily basis? What kind of influence? So it's a labor. It's a spiritual. It's like a woman that is in the labor room. So every day that you wake up, you are in the labor room of destiny. Every day. And what you are trying to birth is the kind of man that you want to be waking up in this body on a daily basis. You are trying to birth it. If you don't live with that kind of consciousness, Satan will have the ability to infiltrate your space and create all kinds of alternatives for you that will keep you busy. It will look like it is satisfying an appetite in your life, but you will not know that it is deviating you from becoming the kind of man that God has in mind. Yes. I was telling a young man that came to see me today, and I said that a time came in, in my life that I shut down television for five years. Five years. And for you, it might not mean anything, but for me, it was a big sacrifice. Five years. I was in love with movies. Not the type you watch, not Nollywood. I like American movies. I was in love with it, in love. Five years of my life, I shut down movies, I shut down football, I shut down television. Five years. Because I found out that television had become an access gate. The brother I was speaking with today, I told him, I said, if you do what I'm telling you to do now, I give you 14 days. You know you say that the, you are struggling with pornography, you are struggling with lust, you are struggling with all this. Is the problem is discipline in what? Training. Is the problem. That's why you are vulnerable to Satan. You are careless. There are too many things you are involved in. You see, the Christian is not designed to do many things. You are involved in too many things, so there are access gates. Any small crack that Satan has, he will take advantage of it. I told him, I said, just shut down 14 days and spend 8 to 10 hours, especially, me, I envy people who are in full-time ministry. They don't have to go to work. Hey, the day I enter full-time, you, you will see the difference. You will see it. You will, you will know that there's a difference. There's no way you can be in full time and the anointing will not be multiplied by 500%. It's not possible. Not possible. 
You don't have to come to the office at 8 and sign and be doing yes, sir, yes, sir. Then maybe when you want to travel in this place, eh, there's one class that they have. Nobody disturbs you. You can lie down before God. If you do that, 8, 10 hours every day, reading books, Christian books, for instance, just reading, reading scriptures, reading, reading scriptures, reading books, pornography will die. Because as you begin to do that thing, the core of your spirit will begin to yearn for something different. You are training it. You are, you are now whetting the appetite of your spirit for something that is not in this realm. It will begin to crave it. Those sexual dreams you are having where a demon will come and want to have sex with you in the dream, you will see the way you will revolt in that dream. The reason you are always weak in the dream is that you are not disciplined in training. You are vulnerable. You are fighting as one that is beating the air. You are not precise. So everything in your life just goes. You just do things. And five years, I had to shut down to you. Some of you, the reason you've not grown in your love for God is that movies are like a, a yoke on your throat. Two minutes, you are inside Keke. You want to watch uh, Philomena Love of Gochuku and they died. It's because of you that Nollywood has designed all the kind of movies they have designed. They know that you have a craving for foolish things. So when you come into the presence of God and you are saying, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you, Satan knows that there's a, a, a landing pad in your life that he can use to infiltrate your space. So you are fighting like one who is beating the air. You claim that you want to win the boxing match, but you can't land precise blows because you are not disciplined in training. Because you need to train your spirit man. You need to train your spirit man. You need to train it. If your spirit man is strong, your soul will be secured. Because it is your spirit that is now educating your soul as a Christian. If your spirit man is is the way it's supposed to be fed, your soul will not be vulnerable. Most of the time, the spirit man is like Kwashoko. So the soul is naked. And Satan can infiltrate. In warfare, in warfare, discipline in training is very important. So for the Christian, our training is not jumping poles. It's not taking a jog. Paul said that bodily exercise is not useless. It profited. There's a little profit. Why? It helps your body. If your body is healthy, your body will live longer to carry your soul and spirit. He says he profited little. He says, but the recommendation for the believer is that he should do what? Exercise himself in what? Godliness. There's an exercise. The way you do, hey, ooh, ah, ah, you have to exercise yourself in godliness. This is why we develop spiritual disciplines. So if you are going to be precise, because what Paul was speaking about here is precision. I do not fight as one that beats the air. I land my blows with purpose. I do not run aimlessly, just running, 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 running. No. It's destination because you want to arrive at the destination. I want you to become exceedingly desirous to see what God wants to make you. What kind of Christian does he want to make you? Sometimes, don't enter into the prayer place and be doing, ge, ge, ge. sit down with the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want to do with my life, really? It's important. What do you want to do with my life? What are you trying to fashion out of this young man, this young girl? What do you want to make out of me? Lord, show me. Show me. It's not enough to see anybody that is anointed and you say, I covet your grace. Do you know that what God has not given you and you are coveting it is greed? Is covetousness. It will not add anything to your life. Even though the Bible says covet earnestly the best gifts. If that gift is not part of God's plan for your pilgrimage on the earth, 
you are just being a thief. It will never come. Never come. God is not looking for places to just dump resources. Whenever God wants to channel resources, a criteria in the spirit is required. Purpose must be known. Resources, spiritual resources only move in the direction of where purpose is known. If not, those resources will be sent to you and you will waste it or those resources will become a curse. Is the reason why you will look God in the eye and deny him. Those resources. It's when you have begun to appreciate what God wants to do with you. If God is trying to make you a missionary and you are trying to be an apostle or an evangelist, you will be in that whole cycle for long until the day it comes to you that I am nomadic, I am built for the fields. And you begin to appreciate that calling. The things that he gives to men, including the ability to die for Jesus, will now become heavy on your spirit. Because now you know what he is trying to do with your life. It's not everybody he gives a voice to sing that he will tell to release an album. It's not everybody. It's not everybody that has the gift of singing, that has the anointing for an album. But people will just naturally assume that because they can sing and they can bless people in church, they have released an album with 14 tracks. And after they have kept the album for five years, even their family members will not buy. Then you are going back to ask God, Lord, how come I've put so much resources in this thing and it has not yielded results? It's because it is not part of the plan. It's not part of the plan. So what is a spiritual discipline? Let me give you some definitions. Then I'll give you a few things and we close. Number one. Spiritual disciplines are practices. Practices. Within your control. Spiritual disciplines are practices within your control that facilitate your spiritual growth. Spiritual disciplines are practices within your control that facilitate your spiritual growth. That's the spiritual discipline. Practices, I'm choosing my words carefully because these things are important. Even though we are helped of the spirit, you must realize that whether in the negative supernatural or the positive supernatural, a spirit can never make you do what you don't want to do. Never. Never. What, for instance, in the negative supernatural, all Satan can do is suggest. I was explaining to someone today that, look, look, when you, when you say, when you say um, a force is compelling me to masturbate, a force is compelling me to fornicate, that if I don't fornicate, if I don't watch pornography, or if I don't masturbate, or if I don't steal the money, I will not rest. The force is compelling me. Now, demons compel people. Yes, they do. They can compel. But you see, in their compulsion, they will not control your action, except you are possessed by a demon. Are you with me? I've taught you this thing before. Possession means ownership. If a demon owns you, the demon can control your thoughts, can take over your body. But a Christian cannot be possessed by a demon because you have the Holy Ghost. So if the demon is going to compel a Christian, the compulsion will be happening from where? Outside. That means that the demon cannot carry your hand. That while you are sitting down, they put the money on the shelf. And everybody has left the shop. And then you are just sitting down there. And then the demon comes and says, take the money, take the money. Say, I won't take the money. Then you just see your hand doing like this. Say, ah, uh, I don't want to take the money. I don't. The demon says, you must take it. No. He will put pressure on your mind till you agree that you are too weak to resist. 
he needs you to agree that you are too weak to resist then once you have agreed you will now give instruction to your hand to your eye to your ears to your body to act upon the thing that the demon has suggested to you if you do not agree that you are weak like pastor Mino was saying yes last week he said you don't know how powerful no is in the spirit no I teach people who come to me, when you are, you are being harassed, demons harass. There's what is called demonic harassment. Demons can decide to harass you. For instance, if you are under demonic harassment and the demon wants you to fornicate, you will just find out that that whole week as you are leaving your house, even a mad woman will look attractive. You are under demonic harassment. You will see her smelling dirty and all, but your body will be moving. It's harassment. Every woman you see, your eyes will be going to the wrong places. It's demonic harassment. Now, Satan can attack your mind. He cannot arrest your tongue. And your words are more powerful than your thoughts. So when your mind is under harassment, speak up. You talk. Sometimes I go and pray with people and I've cast out a demon. And then I will hear the devil say in my ear that this demon will visit you in the night. Immediately I say, it's not possible. Sometimes when you hear me say, I'm leading prayer and I say, that devil is a liar. I heard something. It's not, it's not, I'm not, I'm not using it to blow guy. That devil is a liar. No. Some of you have been here, when I will say that thing, the atmosphere will shift. It's because I heard something. I heard something. And I'm telling you, I speak up because I've learned that your words are more powerful than what? Don't keep the warfare in your mind. The Bible says he took Jesus to a high mountain. You think they were flying in the sky? Where did, how did he take him? It was something that was happening in the realm of the mind. When all those things and those pictures were being shown, what did, how did Jesus respond? He said, the Bible says he opened his mouth and he spoke to him. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him alone shall you serve. Your words are powerful. Very powerful. So, practices that are within your control. It means that you are the one that will determine use. You are the one that will determine use. You are the one that will determine frequency you is within your control if you were not within your control God will not demand it of you and since it is within your control you must understand that the idea is to advance you facilitate facilitate is the English word that simply means to make something easier so these spiritual, these practices that are within your control will make your spiritual growth what? Easier. That somebody is engaging in spiritual discipline does not automatically mean that they are growing spiritually. Are you with me? Because we know people who are prayer warriors that are thieves. We know people that if they start praying, they can hold pole and do ga ga ga. They can beat their wives. Are you with me? It doesn't automatically mean that you are growing. But spiritual disciplines are supposed to make spiritual growth what? Easier. Number two. What is a spiritual discipline? Number two. It's, there are actions. 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 That create a bridge actions that create a bridge between where you are and the man or woman you want to be. Actions that create a bridge between where you are and the man or woman that you want to be. Actions that create a bridge so they help to close the gap. They help to close the gap. They help to close the gap. 
So if you are engaging in those spiritual dis disciplines, like Pastor Minion was saying last week, you are reading scriptures, you are engaging with spiritual reality, that becomes a bridge to connect you between your now and your future picture. You can't become anything if you don't know how to practice spiritual disciplines. If you don't become disciplined in training. You can't. It's that bridge. So I've always told you that the difference between one Christian and the other is your level of yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. If you are going to be yielded to the Holy Spirit, you must be one that is engaged in spiritual disciplines. Number three, spiritual disciplines are a measure for spiritual health. A measure for spiritual health. We'll come back to 1 Corinthians 9. They are a measure for spiritual health. Give me Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. A measure of spiritual health. Now what do we mean by spiritual disciplines are a measure of spiritual health? We expect that if you are spiritually healthy, if you are spiritually healthy, you should be engaging in spiritual disciplines. That means, I'll give you a list of some basic spiritual disciplines, about six of them, I'll give you six. So when we see you engaging in those spiritual disciplines, we expect that you should be healthy. And if you are healthy, you will be able to wage war against Satan. Most of the time, I use the example of that evangelist again. The biographer said that he was too weak. So when that young lady fell and began to convulse and a rapper opened and he was trying to pray for her, she quickly grabbed him. He didn't have enough strength to resist. He was weak. So most of the time, you will not know how unhealthy you are spiritually until Satan puts you under pressure. It is then it will now be obvious to you that you don't have the quotient of presence, of wisdom, of power from the realms of God to be able to push back Satan and say no. That's why it looks as if the compulsion of Satan is overwhelming you. You can't say no because you are not healthy. You are weak. You are dying. So small pressure that other men who are healthy will look at and throw away their face. You are lingering for the second look because you are unhealthy. So one of the ways to measure your spiritual health is to check your spiritual disciplines. Am I still using what I'm supposed to use? Am I still maintaining the frequency for the things I'm supposed to maintain? Right? Lastly, spiritual disciplines are waking you to God. They are waking you to God. Let's read it. There's so much more I would like to say about this. But it is difficult to explain. This is Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11. Since you are what? Spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. Paul is saying, I want to say some more things. But you are spiritually dull. You don't seem to listen. There's something wrong with your spiritual condition. And once you become spiritually vulnerable, you'll be meat for Satan. That's why people are losing their battles. Losing their battles. Losing in their academics, losing in their finances, losing in their marriages, losing in their businesses. Because they are spiritually unwell. And you see, I've had a rude shock since we entered January that has made me be begin to meditate. There are so many people that you look at and you see the person, you think that this person is spiritually healthy until certain situations happen. Then you find out that this person is shallow, doesn't know God. Doesn't know God. Next verse, verse 12. It says, you have been believers for so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. 13, the last verse. For someone who lives on milk is still what? An infant and doesn't know how to do what? What is right. It's an infant. 
So when you meet somebody that is an infant like this, you will find out that he doesn't know how to do what is right. Can't even maintain basic spiritual discipline. We have told you this year. Don't joke with your Bible. Read it. Be deliberate about it. Read it. Read it. Or God, read it. Read it. Don't just read it. Begin to measure your life by the expectations of scripture. Measure your life. I was saying to us on Sunday, I didn't have the time. I didn't know time had gone, so I couldn't deal with it. I wanted to deal with all those things that Paul spoke about. Add to your faith character. Add it. I mean, Peter. Add to your faith character. Add to character self-control. It's you that we add it. There's not going to be a class where I will call you and sit down and say, add now. Add. I say, add. That's what you are looking for. No. He said, add. Be deliberate. You will wake up one day because every day you are in the labor room. You are trying to bet a kind of man, a kind of woman every day. In your character, you will begin to put your character under the microscope of, microscope of scriptures. And say, this thing is not correct. You add it to your faith. You add self-control. You add patience. You add temperance. You add it. It's deliberate. I don't have the time. Time is gone. I, I would have shown you that in life, there is your new life. As you walk with God, there is what God does that he calls updates. Maybe next week if I'm here. Then, apart from updates, there are what are called upgrades. They are different. From time to time, God will give you updates in your work with him. An update is, is an improvement on the current state that God is dealing with you on. He will be giving you little, little improve, improvement. An upgrade is a spiritual promotion. They are different. If you don't know how to deal with God consistently, you will be in that state all your life. You will not even have updates. Some people are in that state the, the way they met Jesus for 15 years. They are still there. No updates. No additions on that package. Meanwhile, there are packages that have lined up on the shelf in heaven. Since 1981 that they got born again. There's a package for 1985. But because that old one, they've not become anything in it. The update has not even kicked in. So they are now in 2025. They are still carrying the version of 1981. God can't entrust them with upgrades. Because there's no deliberate cycle around their lives. So let me give you some spiritual disciplines. I said the last one is that spiritual disciplines help to awaken you to God. What do I mean? They make you more sensitive to the spirit. Once you become more sensitive to the spirit, it is easy for you to discern when Satan is walking around your space. That's why Satan doesn't want you to um, be disciplined in training. Because spiritual dis discipline is training. It's building tradition around your life. It's creating practice. So that when an intruder enters your space, you can identify him. Many of us are not sensitive to God. We, are not, we have not yet awakened to God. We are still dead to God, even though we are in Christ. We are not yet awake. We are not yet alive. So eyes can't see. Ears can't hear. We are deaf spiritually. We are blind spiritually. We are insensitive to the stirrings, the movements, the impressions of the spirit. In that case, you are easy pickings for the devil. You are an easy target in the spirit. Because Satan can manipulate the voices around you and you will not be able to tell that it's not the voice of God. Hmm? You will not be able to tell. Because it's not enough that you can know right and wrong. What if it looks good? It's not bad. It is good, but God doesn't want it for you. Can you tell? That's the matter. That's the matter. Six spiritual disciplines that will make you not... Fight as one that beats the air. Six. Hmm? 
Number one, prayer. Number one, prayer. I want you to write it like this in your note. A fixed hour of prayer. Write it like that. If you don't want to write hour, write time. A fixed time of prayer. Fixed. Emphasis on fixed. Emphasis on fixed. So, go back after tonight. If you've not been, if you did not follow um, our Father and the Lord's teachings on the science of altars, I encourage you to do it. To go and listen to those teachings. The audios are on his Telegram channel, Apostle Arumi Osai on Telegram, and the videos are on YouTube. I encourage you, sit down, study it, how to deal with God by covenant, how to create what is called a covenant time of prayer. A fixed time. There's, there's power in routine. Power. There's power in routine. If you build routine around your prayer life, it will become very, very potent. There's power. So pick a fixed time. And we've taught you here before. Don't be under pressure to go with what is popular. The reason early hours of the morning are chosen by most people is that. It is easier to pray. Less interference. And yes, most of the spiritual things that happen, happen during the early hours of the morning. Late night into early hours. The witches are up doing their thing. So what better time for you to also be engaging in spiritual activity? It's not as if if you pray early hours of the morning, your prayers will be more potent than the person that prays during the day. Are you with me? So if your schedule is such that the best time for you that you'll be effective for your fixed hour of prayer is morning, put it in the morning and stick to it. Is important. Stick to it. Have a fixed hour. Now that you have a fixed hour of prayer, also learn to pray intermittently. Learn to pray intermittently. That means you can just be walking on the road. It might not be more than two minutes, but you have prayed. Learn it. Make it practice. Practice to pray intermittently. Number two, fasting. Fasting. Kai, time is gone. Can I take five more minutes? Yes, sir. Number two, fasting. So have a time in your life, a fixed period of fasting. Once a week, twice a week, know the times that you shut down your belly. Number three, I call it the sacred meal. Sacred meal. That's how you feed your spirit. That's Bible study. The sacred meal. Sacred. S-A-C-R-E-D. Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, Romeo, Echo, Delta. Sacred meal. Consistently feed your spirit with the bread of the word of God. Feed your spirit with the bread of the word of God. Number four. Observe the Sabbath. In fact, when I was writing out this list, this is the one that God used to punch on my heart. Even my wife complains that I don't rest. Observe the Sabbath. Make sure Sabbath is a discipline. You must have the discipline of rest to refresh. If not, you will burn out. Have a discipline of rest. Have it. Sometimes I'm at work, from work to the house. I will do some things in the night. I'm up again. So sometimes if I sit down in flight, I must sleep because I probably have not slept all night. It's compulsory. The Sabbath, you must observe. Have periods of rest in your life. What do you do during your rest? You do meditation and contemplation during your rest. Meditation, contemplation. Because if you don't know how to use rest to your advantage, Rest can become an open door for spiritual attack. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So you must use it to your advantage. You are resting, but you are meditating, and you are what? Contemplating. 
Number what are we now? Number five. Number five. Pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. What do I mean by pilgrimage? There are times you need to travel to attend conferences. Plan it. There, there, there should be meetings around your life that you go to to receive words from the Lord, impartations, and certain things. Develop a discipline around it. Don't just attend every meeting because you heard a man of God is coming. I can't build on that, but your pilgrimage must be deliberate. The Bible says that they had to come to Bethlehem for the census. There must be a spiritual uh, direction that God is taking your life for you to attend certain spiritual meetings. I'm not talking about meetings in your local assembly. For instance, we have regular conferences here. That's not what I'm talking about. If for any reason you need to step out of your local assembly to attend the conference, make sure that it is according to the leadings and the dictates of God. Don't just attend meetings because you want to attend meetings. You are looking for breakthrough. You are looking for food. When I go to a program, I go with an open spirit based on the things God would have told me. See what I want to do. So I go to the meeting looking for that opening. And every time I go like that, I come with something. You must be deliberate. Number six. I think that's the last one. Oh, there are two more. Giving. 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 Giving is a spiritual discipline. Write it there in your note. Write it. Grow in your generosity. Grow. It's a spiritual discipline. Grow, grow in it. I've taught you here before when I did money parables. Nobody is too poor to be a blessing. None. None. Grow, grow in. Be deliberate in your growth in generosity. Be deliberate. Last not least, number seven, observe sacred seasons. Observe sacred seasons. So there are times in your life that God will call you to withdraw. There are times he will call you to a long fast. There are times he will call you to do certain things. Observe sacred seasons. There must be such seasons in your life where you are, you are doing certain things on the basis of God's instruction. It can be a fast. God can just tell you 60 days. He can just tell you this weekend, go and be with me. Come and be alone with me in a retreat. You must have sacred seasons in your life. If you are able to build these things around your life, I assure you, sit and nourish. It's too small. All those sexual things you are dreaming, all those things that are going on in your family, give this thing, for instance, three months. Do this thing for three months. Even you yourself, you will not recognize yourself. I assure you. The way you will be feeling on your inside, you will never want to lose that feeling. Do it consistently for three months. Like I was telling the brother that came to see me. Just read, read. I told him, at the core of my theology, the person that made me the way I am, eh, my discipler in my growing days was A.W. Tozer, even though I've never seen him face to face. That's the man that discipled me. I used to sleep with his books. I'm fasting with his books. Toza. So if I hear somebody, if you pick a book and you're reading it now, I know how Toza talks. I know his language. I know his heart. At the core of my person, I'm a Toza product. Before I started listening to our Father and the Lord Apostle, I remember you must, you must be able to give yourself to something totally and allow God to forge you, to walk you from the inside. If you don't, you will not have precision and you will miss your destination. Bow your heads. Ask the Lord for grace tonight.
Just ask him for grace. I don't know about you, but me, Kesena, I want to be precise. I want to be precise. There is a precision that should be associated with a Christian. I want to be precise. I want to be precise. I beg you, pray. I know we've taken some time. Just take two minutes. Take advantage of the corporate anointing. And beg the Lord. Paul said, I put my body under subjection. I put it under. That's what it means to be disciplined in training. I put my body under subjection. Under. Kabarada Bokoshada. Pray, young lady, pray. Young man, pray. Young man, pray. Ora bako sila balai. Shada la brogozele bragidaya. Yeda vana kobre zuza parai. Oh, David de paria da la bote. Do you know you can ask for help tonight? You can ask for help. Our goal this year is that none of us will be victims of this war. Every one of us will live victoriously. It's our goal. That's what we are dedicating Wednesdays for now. To sharpen iron. To forge us into weapons. That rising and falling you have been suffering for years, it ends. It will, it will not be associated with you this year. We will not hear that you don't have a prayer life. God forbid it. God forbid it. This year you will fall in love with scriptures, so madly in love with scriptures, you can't go a day without looking upon the pages of the Bible. This year, you will become a mobile router of the Lord's presence. You will be an oracle of his wisdom. You will be a dispenser of his power. His glory will follow you wherever you go. That's how we want to live this year. Remember the Lord told us that this year we will begin to look like our prophetic blueprint. We will begin to look like what God said we are. This year, this is the year. We will not take it for granted. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We don't have time. I wish we could still pray.